Are you there? Are you paying attention? Seriously, are you paying attention? In this video, I'm gonna give you the steps that you need to take if you wanna start a business when you have a job or family. There are many people that I get that in the comments, I get it in my email box like, hey, Glendon, how do I start a business when I have a job? Well, here today, I'm gonna solve that for you. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com. If you want to start a business and you need some direction, be sure to get 30 days to 2500 or to save a lot of green, be sure to get the whole package. Click that link below the video to be put on. So with that, let's jump into this video. I want you to listen to me. Now, the first thing that you have to do is focus. And you need to get out of your head all of these things about multiple streams of income. You have your job, right? That's your income. Your first primary major focus should be getting one business up and running. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but one business. And I'm about to drop how you can get that one business started not lose your mind and not burn out. We're going to make some assumptions that you know what kind of business model that you want to employ or deploy. You have some clue to what you want to make those dollars come, right? So we're, we're not going to get into all of the discovery process of what kind of business should you do because I don't know you. I don't know your strengths. I don't know your weaknesses. I don't know your resources. And with that, before we begin, you should look at that first before you look at anything else. Many people come online, they'll see someone like me or someone else, and it's like, hey, they're doing what I want to do. And they'll try to do it without really looking at the resources. Now that we've got that cleared up, let's get into the process. What you want to do if you are married is sit down with your spouse and say, look, I want to start this business. But hey, you've got that family thing going on, right? So it's like, look, I need an hour a day, seven days a week. Once again, there are no days off because you got a job, you have a family. You, you want to get this thing started, right? So that's called the hour of power. Now, what you're going to do after you have this conversation with your spouse and your kids, if need to be, you're going to set up a home office. Yes, if you've got the ability, if you can't set up a home office, don't worry about it. But if you have a spare room, that's going to be your office. You're going to go get yourself a desk, get it off Craigslist, buy something new. I don't care. You're going to set your computer up. You're going to set all of the stuff up that you need. Then for one hour, and you're going to put it on the calendar each day for this hour, I'm in my office doors closed, cell phones turned off. So no, you're not going to solve little household emergencies. And this is going to be a struggle because when you're at home, people don't think that you're working. Get that cleared up, be firm. And this is the reason you have this family conversation because if you do this and start doing it, friction, friction, friction. If you have a job and you live alone, skip this step. Now that you've got all that cleared up, the next thing that you need to do is figure out the angle for your market. There's nothing new under the sun, right? Everything is done. There's a few innovations, but everything is what it is. Uber didn't invent taxi cabs. They just made hailing a taxi better. So you gotta look at what you can do, whether it's your product or service, make it better. Something that someone isn't doing well. Forget this whole thing of, well, no one's not doing that, that's rare. But it's like, how can I make it better? How can I make it personal? So you're going to spend your time on crafting your offer. Now, before you go online, you're going to test your offer locally. Yes, locally. And the reason you want to do locally is it, it doesn't matter if you put it online, because if it doesn't convert locally, it's not going to convert online. It's just not. So if you can't sell someone in your town or your office or your friends list, guess what? It's not going to work online. Yeah. So during that hour, you're not going to spend weeks. You're not going to spend months. You're going to get together your service, your product, the offer. And I'm going to talk about for folks who have more complex things in a minute. 
And the first week during your hour of power, you're going to sort that stuff out. And then at the end of that first week, you're going to go ask someone for money. If you have a service or a product that's relatively not that complex, that's what you're going to do. Because see, what many people are doing wrong is trying to get online to get money without authority. When you start coming online saying, hey, I'm here to help you in this category, right? The trolls, the haters, the doubters, and even people who are not mean spirited are going to like, is this person's for real? Can this person help me? And if you go ahead and do what I call the pump up to authority method, what's going to happen is you're going to run out of content really soon. And then the next thing you know, you're going to have to jump to some other way of making money online and people will be paying attention. Okay. Now you have something that's complex. Say it's going to take you six months to do the research because Maybe you're taking it to market. Maybe you need to bring in partners. Once again, your golden hour of power. You will take an hour and you'll move it around. If you need to meet with someone, that's your golden hour of power. See, this is the thing. If you take this big complex, whatever you have apart and break it down to core components. All right. I need to do this thing, but I need to talk to someone. Find out who you need to talk to. Put it on the list, who you need to talk to, what companies you need to call, golden hour of power, right? Then the next week, you start calling those people. Then once you get that information, you start it all over again. See, this system works for complex things. It works for simple things. But the thing is, this system will not work if you don't work. And that typically is the problem. Now, You've got your marching orders. Now, what kind of containers can you use to keep track of all this stuff? You can use pieces of paper like I do. You can use Evernote. You can use your Google Calendar. You can use your iPhone calendar. Doesn't really matter how you track this stuff if you're not actively tracking it. Many people get caught up in tools and tactics and platforms. And the thing is, they all work and they all fail. Where most people go wrong is they've never went to the beginning and said, what do I want to do? What do I want to put all of my heart, effort and energy into? And that's the thing, because you can make money doing anything. You can make money selling anything. It's just, does that align with what you want to do in life? Does that align with your personal ethic? Does it align with, you know, what you want? Like, maybe you like speaking, right? Maybe it turns you on to be on a stage and talk to 50, 150, 200, 300, 400 people, right? Maybe that turns you on. If you're building a business that's a radical departure from that, you might be a little miserable because what, one of the things that happens is many people do stuff online because it looks good and someone told them that it looked good and it may not be for them. And the only time that you can work on your business, well, say you got a job, the only time you can work on your business is the weekends. Your weekends are booked for the next year. Now, what does that mean? What, do, what does that look like? That looks like no trips. That looks like no hanging out. Maybe if you have to go to a funeral, maybe a good friend is getting married, go. You'll feel horrible if you don't. But these type of events don't happen every weekend. They don't. Most weekends are stuff that you want to do or just lay around and do nothing. Now that you've committed to building your business and you know that it's not going to happen overnight, you are in a position to change your life. You know that you'll have to give up weekends. You know that a lot of your favorite things you like to do Monday through Friday, you may not be able to do them for a few years. Let me say that again, a few years or you may not be able to do them as often. I see a lot of stuff about people crafting these businesses, making a ton of money and having all of this free time. I don't think that that is a long-term play if it ever happens. I think there are people who do it, but it's going to be short lived because typically tactics only work so long. So, if you go ahead and invest in this golden hour of power and you start to build something more durable, you start to gain real experience, you start to gain real authority, it might take you 
five or six or seven years to get where you want. I'm putting that out there. But when you get there, it will be very hard for someone to knock you off your pedestal because your foundation will be so strong. Your, your knowledge base will be wide and it'll be deep. But if you do what I call surface authority, which is you come online, you learn something real quick, you just uh, do that thing right. Next thing you know, this is where you're going to get that label of a scammer. Because at some point, there's going to be a chink in your armor and it will be exposed and your haters will jump on it with all type of veracity. Now, you may not care about that. You really may not. I'm going to get this question, so I'm going to answer it. What book should I read, Glendon? Pick one. Contagious by Jonah Berger. Influence by Robert Caldaldi, I believe. Uh, Rework by Jason Fried. Pick one. Now, this is the thing. When I say pick one, and I'm not being flippant. Take the book, read it, then read it again, then inhale it until you can almost quote chapters and verse from the book because all books like that are good. And if you start to own the information versus just inhaling and consuming to say, hey, I read this book. So what? If you read the book and you really implement, you read, inhale, consume, where it becomes part of you and you start to implement, you'll get traction. You'll get a lot of traction. So it's not a matter of which book, it's a matter of how you read and implement the book. Because as you start to build this pathway of success, you'll realize something as you go out and you meet successful people. Many of those folks didn't read a bunch of books. I know it's quoted that Bill Gates reads a book a day or Warren, some, I don't know if it's true or not, I don't know. But I do know this, if you're reading books and someone else is implementing, they are going to kick your ass. Because when you implement, you find out stuff that gives you the knowledge to write a book. That's all I gotta say on that. <laughs> That's all I gotta say on that. So think about that. Hopefully this helps you. If you need more, I do have paid services. The links are below. So with that, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share.